Hey, what is up everyone? It is Rich. All right, welcome to Super Fun Sunday. This is going to be a good one. I'm actually excited to look through these. So what I did is uh, I wanted to do something different. Um, I had a lot of artists kind of circling in my head. Uh, Struzan kept popping up, but uh, I've done Struzan a couple of times already. So if you're like, oh man, I should have done Struzan, just search my channel because I definitely have done at least one really, really good Struzan video. Um, but I opted for Heavy Metal Magazine. So we're going to look at four issues from uh, two are from 1977 and I think two are from 1978. So this is the premiere issue, if I'm not mistaken. I could be off on that, but I believe this is. Uh, am I looking? Uh, I think this is the first one that was released in the United States. So, um, so many good artists. Um, I've got, I think, some interesting insights that might help you appreciate sort of these magazines more. Um, and, uh, you know, it's it's one of those things. It was funny because as I was opening files and kind of preparing this video, um, I it, it made me think of, of my own sort of, uh, what would you call it, like reaction to what I was seeing. And then I put it in a time and place, which is 1977, and actually purchasing this magazine, and what you really got out of it, which is you were able to enter these incredibly creative worlds with some of the greatest artists from around the world, and you're also going to be exposed to different styles. So where that kind of gets lost now is the fact that we're completely overwhelmed or I don't know if you would consider it overwhelmed but there's there's so much really anything that you would like to see now you can not only see it but you can skip over it or or you know I think everything has been sped up so much but it reminded me of an interview that I saw with Trent Reznor and he said something very profound but it reminded me of that time and and I think that there's an important um, takeaway from what, what I'm about to tell you. So he said when he was a kid, you would save up your money and you would buy an album, generally based on maybe some radio hit single that they had been playing, and this would be probably a little bit before MTV. Uh, so, so you know, you would hear a song on the radio and you would go, oh man, I love this song. So a lot of times, especially back then, the albums sometimes kind of sucked. But there might be one or two good songs on a record. But what Trent said, and I, I really feel that it's true, is is you didn't have a lot of records. Okay, So when you would buy a record like that, you would really, really listen to it and try to find things that you liked about it. Even in the songs that you didn't like, because if it had nine songs on the record or ten songs on the record, and you really were only into two, two really grabbed your attention... Um, you would try to get a value out of it. Now I think that that's lost and the value is just speeding through looking at different art with really kind of reckless abandon. And I think where that can cause issues for people is it can possibly give you maybe a bit of an identity crisis. I think it can really kind of um, sort of practic practically break up um, your own sort of motivations. Um, it can encourage you, but also discourage you really fast. I think people get do get overwhelmed. And so you have to imagine being a teenager that's really into art and you go into your local 7-Eleven and you pick up one of these magazines. And for the next four or five weeks, this is gonna be your gateway into these incredible worlds. And you're really gonna get a lot of value out of it because it's just, it's your new magazine and and it's like you really i had a friend that was like this where i i always appreciated how much he appreciated everything he had it was a really interesting thing but he was so observant and you know like like maybe you don't like this cover drawing like you go eh, it's all right it's cool or something like that he was the type of person that he would look at this and kind of like really really dissect it and find things that he did like and and i do think that that's an important um uh, like uh, ability to have which is is to and, and this even goes for stuff that you like it's a very powerful tool um which is is you may like like have an artist that you absolutely love their stuff but if you can actually sort of pull this off you know you can really look at the stuff and and, and determine things that you actually don't like about it. it sounds weird like a negative approach but um 
Uh, both both actually contain value. So, um, all right, so let's get to this. What is super fun Sunday? It is super fun. It is early. It's nine o'clock in the morning. I actually was preparing this thing like an hour ago. So let's get to this. We are going to go in order. And uh, I have, like I said, I have four magazines. So some of the, like, you know, obviously I, I do kind of need to rush. So, so this is Dan. This will be Richard Corbin. Um, you know, my first thoughts seeing this Corbin stuff is I don't know how he made stuff look like Photoshop before Photoshop, but man, this guy was visionary with his color palettes and stuff like that. I mean, it just looks like weird filters put on this stuff sometimes. It's really crazy. Oh, and a heads up too. There is some mild nudity throughout these magazines. So if you're sensitive to stuff like that, I would bail out now. So you might see things that, that will scar you. <laughs> This is European, man. It's going to be fancy, sexy. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. Whoop. So there you go. You wanted it, you got it. But this is really, really amazing. And and uh, I just, you, Corbin is such an interesting artist and uh, real high level. I, I, we've, I've done a couple of videos on Corbin already and I, I talk about like... Uh, how confusing some of his stuff is because it's it's he almost has like multiple personalities throughout his stuff because sometimes i mean he's literally like nc wyeth or just the most insanely detailed and realistic artist you've ever seen and other times man he just pulls it back and it's real cartoony and kind of distorted and weird and uh it's just interesting stuff but you know some crazy anatomy um but yeah it's it's uh it's always fun to um, see what he's up to. Uh, this is really, really great. I was kind of thinking of, of, of 1977 and what would have potentially been going on around this time. So you've got Star Wars. You've got um, Kiss had just dropped like Kiss Alive 2. Van Halen 1 is about to come out anytime. Uh, it's a really creative and kind of high watermark for um, the arts, to be honest. It's, it's a pretty inspired um, period of time. And uh, I don't know if it's like the release from all the late 60s sort of political drama and conflict and stuff like that. And everybody sort of was like, man, we're just going to enjoy the 70s. It's like chill. <laughs> But who knows? Maybe I'm looking back on a, with rose-colored glasses. I don't even know. Uh, all right, this is nice. Really, really cool lighting on this. But, um, yeah, I, I actually started buying Heavy Metal Magazine in the 90s. Um, and uh, I would buy it when my band was on tour. And kind of in a funny way, it was actually exactly what I described, which is... Uh, you know, I didn't have a lot of comic books with me or any kind of like art books. So if I bought an issue of heavy metal, man, I would look at that thing just every day because I didn't have really anything to do for 14 hour drives. And so I would just like bust out my heavy metal magazine and kind of pour through it. And I don't know what that like if it had an impact on on my actual art. I wasn't really drawing very much at that point, just maybe a couple of times a year, but Nevertheless, I was a fan looking at this stuff, and I would revisit it a lot because I just, you know, it was what I had. This is really cool. <clears throat> but, you know, this is a, the, like an unusual little figure. I would feel like if I drew this, I would feel like it kind of messed up. Like, it would bother me. But, you know, and it's not to say that it didn't bother Corbin, but, yeah, I mean, if stuff started to drift into that a little bit, I'd be like, ah, oh, man, I kind of blew that this too is like a little kind of weird looking um but i can all i can talk a little bit about drawing too but let's look at this first because this is it's it's this stuff is so exciting and when you just you turn the page and you're just like wow look at this story man this is so nuts i'm gonna say that this is julie it kind of looks like it i uh um I think that they did have a credits page on the end. Yeah, this is, I think this is true. Some of these guys get super detailed. Whoa, whoa, what is this thing doing? Good grief. It's trying to, you got that right. I 
I think also uh, what what I like about this kind of stuff too is is I, I you know I, I do Patreon and lessons and stuff like that. Oh, and and uh, while I'm talking about that, um, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do. And uh, honestly, I would recommend hitting the notifications bell. I'm going to be uploading a lot more videos um, moving forward. And uh, also, if you could hit the like button, it would definitely help me. But uh, yeah, so on Patreon, um, what I try to do is I, I really try to encourage everyone to pursue art and draw. And what's neat about stuff like magazines like this is you start to see real quick that there's room for many, many different styles and different styles and different story types and stuff like that will generate a different fan group for you. And so there really is room for everyone. And, you know, I mean, I tell people, I go, look, if you do a real weird style, I mean, you're definitely going to have a, a more niche audience, but that doesn't mean that that audience won't support the hell out of your work. Um, and, uh, you could have a lot of success with it. So, you know, kind of anything goes with art, to be quite honest. I mean, I think it's easy when you look at mainstream, uh, like American comics in particular, um, to, to just kind of go like, oh, if I don't draw in like this mainstream style, I'm never going to get work. This is, this is really nicely done. Um, let me do this really quick. Contents. I'm gonna leave the contents up. So this story is because it's gonna bug the shit out of me. Uh, so Rut was Drie. Concrete Armies is Dianette and Gal. I'm not 100% familiar with the artist's name. Oh, sorry. It's very very nicely drawn though. Man, that's a lot of work. A lot of work. Man, yeah, I remember these. These are cool. I, I I say this in many videos, as long as I've been around art, and as much art as I've seen, thousands and thousands and thousands of drawings, maybe a million at this point, I, it, it never ceases to amaze me that, that artists can draw stuff like this. I think it's just fantastic to see a level of skill and dedication and just the quality of it and it was interesting too is is so i was watching a video with um tim vigil um drawing and it's a youtube channel if you if you look up like tim vigil drawing um man what a what a nice guy and a very intelligent artist i mean he does some very very hardcore stuff in his comic books but I, it was one of the more interesting sort of, I don't know if you would call it like a drawing tutorial that I had seen, but, but his passion and respect of drawing and knowledge too was very, very inspiring. It had a big impact on me. I have to say that it was, it was well worth the time, but it's a three-part video that you can watch him actually um, sort of sketch a piece, pencil it, and then the final chunk is like 90 minutes of him inking it, but he's sort of finishing it in the drawings. But it was really, really interesting really interesting and and i liked what he was saying it was it really kind of brought stuff home and back around for me and and honestly at the end of watching it i was a fan you know i i was like i like this guy i like what he's doing with his art and uh it, yeah it's it's like like i said there's kind of room for all styles and levels of of it you know not everyone's going to be Brian Boland. Not everyone's going to be, you know, who, whoever, these high watermark artists. But it doesn't mean that someone that draws a little more unusually can't, can't really kind of connect with you. So my appreciation is there. And, and also, you'll find this, it depends on what age you are, but as you get older, you start to really respect people that, that stick with something like art for years. There's a level of appreciation. I, I started seeing it more with musicians initially, where I would go like, ah, he's old, he should throw in the towel. And then like 10 years later, I'm like, man, this guy is still at it, or girl. And it's like, then you start to really appreciate the the commitment they have to like creating stuff. And, and then as you get older, then you start to like, you're sort of um, inner art critic or whatever s softens a bit and you start to just appreciate uh, what they're doing so it's the fun of being an artist man there's a, always an evolution and even as a fan there's an evolution to it like this is really really great looking stuff it's it's quite dense art but uh man it's well done 
I don't even know like where a style like this really originates from. If it's just illustration, like um, uh, Hal Foster or something like that. But man, it has a little bit of the um, almost like Filipino, very detailed Spanish art, or you know that kind of thing too, a little bit to it. And we've got some Mobius coming up, which is going to be real exciting. This is fun. I like hanging with you guys on Sunday. I think this is a great way to start the morning. I've got to work all day, but I'm actually looking forward to it. Um, oh, and then, yeah, let me, I can talk a little bit about penciling and, and the things that I've discovered over the, um, the last, like, five or six months. Because I've been, I've been penciling now, I think, seven months. What I would consider being, like, I'm actually a professional penciler now and not just someone aspiring to do it. Um... So there's a lot to manage. That's the one thing that I've been stressing to everyone in Patreon is is that that especially someone coming from inking where inking is pretty like surface um, type uh, focus. You know, you're focused on line quality and some drawing things. You know, kind of trying to tighten things up here and there. But man, the the level of um, obligations or or uh, like sort of job you know job titles that you carry as the penciler is quite quite interesting because you're the designer you're the you know composition you're the lighting director uh and and you're also the actors and the acting part of it is interesting so this is what i think initially happens for people when you're you're drawing your first stories and i think that my first uh crystal planet um comic suffered from this is i wasn't I, I wasn't ready for the story itself. So the first five pages, I've talked about this before. So I agreed to the book and I hadn't read the whole script. I'd only read five pages and I thought it was going to be all sci-fi action taking place in this sort of like future world. And I was like, well, if there was anything that I could do collaborating with someone else, a book like this would be good to go because it's like, at least it's sci-fi, nothing's been designed. So I can kind of make this stuff up and you know, it, it'll be a warts and all uh, type scenario in terms of quality, but I, I should be fine doing this. This is kind of in my wheelhouse. So I agreed to the book and then I, I sat down and I started reading the whole script and page six, I started to go, uh oh, and it was like a lot of stuff that I was not prepared to draw. <laughs> it's like, a bus going through Texas and I'm like a bus now I've got to draw vehicles and in rows of seats with people on a bus the heck and then it was an office and then it was cubicles with people behind computers which that's not actually that hard to draw but um you know and then there's a you know a speech that's given in a ballroom and uh you know a cocktail party and I was just like Jesus what did I get myself into so so what ends up happening to 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 focus in on on it is is you initially are trying one not to embarrass yourself as much as possible by just being able to draw what you're asked to draw um and two you're kind of getting used to organizing all these plates in the air which is the layout the actual drawings itself um the storytelling you know there's there's a lot to it but what i what i kind of messed up on is i really didn't i think capture mood as much as i would have liked to so let's uh i want to see one thing really quick on this uh, I guess it'll be easier to do this. I want to see who this artist is. I don't know what the... Okay, so this is Drie and Alexis on this one. Um, okay. But, um, yeah, and so so I, I spent about three to four weeks after finishing Crystal Planet 1, and the first thing I did is I started attacking anything that I thought that I couldn't draw well. Um, you know, you, you figure out after 25 pages and hundreds of panels what you suck at. And so I was like, all right, I need to get better at X, Y, Z, A, B, D, Q, you know, whatever it is. So I worked on that. And then for the next three weeks, I really just racked my brain about what would make the comic, just any comic that I draw better. And 
I had said in another video that it was interesting is I used to not understand sometimes why pencilers lag so much or or from the outside you might think that they're lazy it's like why does this guy take three weeks to start the freaking book can he just get down to it and you know you start getting the pages and it doesn't really look like anything changed what you realize when you're actually in the hot seat and you're the penciler is you you're trying to work out many many problems and challenges um, whether or not you're going to face them immediately, but it's like, you've got a lot of shit to deal with. So it's fun, but, uh, yeah, you know, I spent like seven weeks between, um, issues just trying to get better to get not only technically better at drawing, but mentally better at drawing and creating mood and atmosphere. And, um, you know, what's my vision as a director of comics, you know? It's real, real interesting, but man, it's, it's so worth the effort, but fuck, man, it's, it's a lot to deal with. We might only be able to get through two magazines. This is a lot of stuff. So Times has a little tiny bit of like Buscema feel. I'm assuming maybe Druyer either wrote this story and then Alexis drew this. Cause this doesn't, I don't know Druyer's stuff real, real well, but, um, it, it doesn't necessarily feel exactly like how I perceive his stuff, but who knows? I could be off. Maybe I'm writing the story wrong. This is really, really nice drawings, though. This is high-level shit. Like, this person can really, really draw. Oh, my gosh. Comics is so fun. It's so challenging, though, too. You'll see this with... Watch interviews with comic book artists, and, and if you see enough interviews with them, at some point, they all say, like, God, it is a lot of work. <laughs> That's funny. Well, and the interesting thing, too, is it, it's it's like you go and you look at someone like Frank Miller, who's boiled their stuff down. Maybe not current day, but I'm just talking about, like, throughout his career, like, refining it to the Sin City look or Dark Knight Returns, whatever you want to uh, think about. Um it, that takes a lot of effort too it's it's you might go like well he's drawing less shit maybe this stuff is simpler but it's like you don't even know the amount of miles that he put on his brain working that out seriously i'm not even kidding that could have took two years for him to cook up that style he may have been dabbling in it like on daredevil and stuff like that and he might have been going like i need to boil this shit down i want my storytelling to be really really direct this is great right here man second panel is awesome Boy, this is really good stuff. At times, it reminds me a little bit of Al Williamson, the length of his figures and some of it. And it's possible that that uh, this artist could be um, influenced by Al Williamson, but it's got a little, a little tiny bit of that vibe here and there. And and probably things that um, uh, Al would have been influenced by, again, you know, going back to Hal Foster or that kind of thing. Um, at times, I get a little bit of a Kevin Nolan vibe, but this is kind of almost pre-Kevin Nolan in a way. But yeah, yeah. So it's like like when you see someone who's simplified their their style a lot, you know, you might think that it's a uh, you might front end it, meaning that you think that that's how they came to that style. Sometimes you, you know you're racking your brain to figure out how to do it. It's like drawing rough. Well, we've talked about this. Even Kelsey and I have brought this up in, in videos. Rough art is actually highly misunderstood, especially by fans. Fans, generally speaking, respond to very slick, kind of, you know, more accurately drawn things. It's just the way that it is. It's, uh, you know, it's got a little bit of a, a spit shine to it. You know, it's like, oh, the feathering's so perfect and so clear and it's so detailed. Um, but coming up with actually like a very efficient rough style is, is quite a challenge. Um, to figure out the level of roughness that you're going to use and things like that. Um, yeah, it's a real interesting um, thing, but nine times out of 10, honestly, if you do a rough style, it, it's, you're just going to have less fans. There's probably some examples we could point out where um, you go, well, this person has a real rough style and it sort of works for them. But even someone like Sean Gordon Murphy, he puts a little bit of rough edges around his stuff, but it's fairly a accurately drawn. Same with like, um, you know some of the other artists that sort of are in that thing it's there's a level of tightness to it too so this is obviously mobius this is so great so i don't know if they refer to it as arzak or oh, okay so arzak yeah sometimes it's azrak sometimes it's arzak so beautiful beautiful story i have this in a book and man it is cool looking it's really really good
it's kind of a bummer that artists that that were fans of a lot of them are starting to pass away because boy I wish that there was more interviews with Jean Giraud about drawing Mobius is what I'm referring to but um you know it's it's like man even for Zeta the lack of of actual in-depth interviews with a guy like that is just it's really really a shame that there's not more but there isn't it's really cool you can feel a little bit of the robert crumb sort of influence on on mobius's stuff here i definitely am under the impression that he was a crumb fan Robert Crumb is good. I've, I've considered doing videos on him before, and I may have. I can't remember. If it was, it was a long time ago. Um, but uh, is, he's an interesting artist. I mean, I didn't... When I first started getting into comics, I wasn't, like, a huge fan, but... There was a... Years ago, there was a very, very big auction on Heritage with a lot of Robert Crumb art, and I started going through it, and I was like, man, this guy is really, really good. It's a very weird backstory for him, too. So this is kind of a pretty trippy dude. Ah, this is great. And the colors are awesome. Let's, uh, we'll look at it smaller first, just to sort of soak in the page. And now we can zoom in. Zoom a zoom. <laughs> the creature's butt is so funny. I'm kind of I it, I don't know what made me think of it. I don't know if it was the detail or or I was I was thinking of artists that kind of disappear and like I said I think mentally are trying to prepare or work out things that they want to do in their art. But one that comes to mind and he's done this several times since I've been following him is Alberto Veranda Vardana, the guy that did um that really really cool kind of Bernie Wrightson sort of um, Frankenstein story. Let me see what it's called. I have right here. Oh, La Mort Vivanti. But he's a guy that just like he kind of vanished again, and and I assume he's probably working on a new project. But he kind of goes into his like cave and sort of creates kind of what he's working on. But you know, you finish a project like that La Mort Vivanti, which was I think it took him years to do. Um, you know, what are you going to do after that? You know, people are going to expect great shit. You, you put the bar that high and then you come out with something that doesn't have that level of effort. You know, people are going to compare just naturally, you know, so <clears throat> some ways I've talked about this too is, is, uh, one thing you can do if you're an artist that wants to do very, very detailed work is you have to create a balance for your fans so that they get used to both. Meaning that you give them the 1,025 million percent pieces, but you have to get them accustomed to, hey, you know, sometimes I draw stuff that I only spend a few hours on. Um, because uh, if not, a guy like him, he's just going to, he'll burn himself out because it's, it's, we've seen it happen with other artists where the the level of detail basically just eats him alive i mean even stephen platt like who was very very detailed started to kind of simplify his stuff he wasn't inking his own stuff it just became too much work you know i mean now he's doing he's in a different career but um you know there's many many artists like that and that's why i've actually i've i've if you've followed any of my other videos i do recommend if you're learning to draw to just focus on learning to draw and don't get so hot on trying to pencil and ink everything you do until you draw well um, and then, you know, you can always experiment with inks, but, but, uh, drawing is hard enough. <laughs> Get good at drawing and then you can start to put other tasks on yourself. But, you know, I also would say if you're really, really determined to ink your own work, then, um, you know, just realize that it's gonna, it will take longer to learn and to, you know, get to the levels that you want with both skills. But I mean... If you've got the time, then do it. This is nice. Actually, I like this technique. You can see just, I mean, this is one magazine. This is a lot of different art and just, this almost has like a, like a manga vibe to it. It's interesting. 
who's the artist that does those horrific stories that everyone likes? The, um, it's a, he's a manga artist that does really, really dark stuff. These are the names. Oh, Fawn Bo did something here. Cool. Oh, this is cool. <laughs> this is nice. Nice stuff. I love uh, these shadows on craters. It's like, I don't know why I've always found that just look. It looks so cool and so kind of epic. Man. Yeah, it's so cool. Ooh. Okay, I'm going to shut this so it doesn't keep doing it. Yeah, this was fun. So we'll do one more magazine, and then I, I need to get to work. My goal is to be done with this at 10. So. Mm -mm -mm. Hopefully everyone's having a good Sunday so far. It's probably better now, right? This is cool. There's an artist that I followed online that does these, like, toy robot paintings. Oh, my God, they're so cool. I don't know the artist's name, though, but... Yeah, they're really, really neat. But, man, this is cool. This is very nicely done, too. Yeah, it's cool. This would take a while. It's a, like a little Jack Kirby vibe up here. Just the tiniest bit, but probably incidental. And then some creepy creepy tech up here with pointies and stuff like that. Man, alive, dude. This guy is nuts. Man, that is really, really cool. This would have been a great, like, full-color poster of this would have been so badass, like a blacklight poster. <laughs> I would hang that on my wall. I need more wall space. God, that ship is cool. This is nice, too. It's an interesting... Direction these ships are facing. I don't know. Let me see something really quick. I, I think if I flip it, it probably won't work, but let me see something. Uh, I don't know. I don't know all those rules. People will tell me about like directing books and stuff like that. Either way, it's a nice drawing. Da -na -na -na. Whoa! Ah, <laughs> I thought the robot was way taller. I pictured this thing being like 100 feet tall. Could just be a proportion issue with it. I don't know. Okay, let's hustle a little tiny bit. That's oh, kind of cool. Finn. Who is Finn and why is he in the book? Oh, so this so this is kind of cool. These are the Hildebrand brothers. I I actually read these books as a kid, but not in the 70s. <laughs> Sometime during the 80s though, I was in a local sort of bookstore and I saw these and I was like, this looks really cool. It's uh, Terry Brooks did a lot of Star Wars stuff much later like in the 90s or maybe even early 2000s. Um but uh, it's, you know, obviously very Tolkien kind of um, inspired. But I liked them. I don't know if I would like them as an adult. But uh, I thought they were really cool. And the art, the art and the little spot illustrations in the book were, were quite nice. But, man, that's a nice painting, you know? Menyon. Menyon Lee, I think, was his name. I love Menyon. Yeah, Sword of Leia. Menyon Lee. I can't remember any of the other character's name. Right. Well, this looks kind of cool. The artist on this is Mushel. I kind of like this. Nice knee. Looks good. This is cool. Oh wow, crazy! This looks like album cover art from the seventies to me. Could be like Grateful Dead art or something. <laughs> 
this this stuff too it looks a little bit like it could be in like some of the early dungeons and dragons books like uh, a monster manual or player's handbook they would hire a lot of different artists styles but it's kind of inked in a similar way to that uh, oh wow damn this is trippy stuff. It looks a little like photo, photo bashed or something. I don't know. He might. I think he just draws like this. This looks a little like it's from a photo, but that's interesting stuff. The car looks like it's from a photo too. Um, kind of like it. This almost feels like it's from like an old ad from like the fifties. You know, like you have to think too. A lot of these artists back in the seventies, they had like morgue files, meaning that uh, they would just save magazines copious amounts of magazines and books and go to the library and they were pulling from like crazy sources of reference and it was actually funny as i was going through a cabinet yesterday and i found like a manila envelope full of all this like reference that i had saved early early in my career just in case because the internet wasn't uh, where you were going to find reference i went a little out of order i apologize for that oh this is nice but yeah, it was like, uh, someone joked about it on Twitter I saw the other day. It was like uh, something about, like, if you had to draw a, ra a raccoon back in the day, you either had raccoon reference or <laughs> you're, you know, you could fake it maybe, but I mean, I could fake a raccoon, but uh, um, other stuff, you know, gets a little harder. If you had to draw the president, you know, or something like that. I was looking at a comic the other day and there was a lot of sort of, you know, the White House and stuff like that, but it was done in the early 80s, but I was like, oh man, this poor bastard, they either had the reference at home or had to go fish this stuff out from somewhere. I started throwing away all my reference a long time ago. Uh, I, I kept some, but most of it's gone. But... I would like if I, if you had friends and their parents subscribed to magazines, you know, you'd be like, Oh, can I have all the guns and ammo magazines or national geographic or even sports illustrated, whatever, and just go through them and rip out any kind of cool photos that like, it's like, I like the folds on this baseball player's pants. In fact, that's somewhere I have actually that exact thing somewhere. It, it's like, it looked cool. I, don't, I, don't, I haven't seen it in years, but <laughs> I remember. Oh, this is nice. This is really, really good. I was considering doing a Jack Davis video, too, in fact. I felt like that was almost too old school for people. But I will do Jack Davis at some point, because I, I would like to see some of his work. Space punks. Hmm, interesting. Almost has a little bit of a Cam Kennedy vibe, if you know Cam Kennedy's stuff, this face in particular. And this is that other story. Yeah, this is so, like, looks like Grateful Dead art. Are you going to go see the dead, man? Right. We'll just go through these real quick. I want to get to the next magazine. Mm -mm -mm. So this is very different, but, but, uh, oh, this is Von Bode. Okay. I think, yeah, I think he pronounces the last name Bode. I don't think it's Bode. Um, <laughs> it's funny. Crazy ship design. Those are kind of cool. Has a little bit of a uh, Bucky O'Hare sort of whimsicalness to it. I like this. I th I think these are cool. Blend a bump. What is going on? You're crazy. I like Farkfoot. See, and, and like, I could totally see myself as a kid. If I had this, I would have totally copied these drawings and tried to learn how to draw these characters. Especially this guy. Oh, man, that's really fun. I always loved faces like this with, um, like, overlapping shapes and stuff like that. I always tell people this. You want to draw something that's actually a little tricky to draw? Try drawing Scooby-Doo. He's he's wacky. You you can draw him, but to really nail like like an on model version of Scooby Doo, he's 
face. <laughs> Very unusual shapes. His mouth and stuff, it's all weird. I used to bug the shit out of me as a kid because I would draw stuff like that and I could just tell it didn't look right. And essentially what it is is you're dealing with proportional issues. Like something is too close together. Or the spatial relationships aren't working and that's why it doesn't look exactly like uh, the, the good artists that were doing it. And you would see it too. I don't know like if people experience this now but like if you followed a cartoon um we would watch reruns of stuff but like there'd be eras where you went like this is how fucking tom and jerry should look and then they would update it and you'd be like oh man this doesn't it's like it looks like them but it doesn't really feel like um old school people know what i'm talking about but scooby-doo is like that too i will say this though i actually did like um mystery ink i think it was called it's a very very bright color palette but it's it was actually those were kind of fun all right so let's do this i am going to go into this one this magazine was pretty badass so we'll go through this whole magazine then we'll call it a wrap but there was a lot of good shit in this one so it was slightly pre-approved by me and there's an ad for animal house <laughs> Oh, and I recommended this book to someone the other day. I mean, you've you've heard me if you've followed me online uh, mention Marcos Mateo Mestri. But a, a, one of the big questions that I get asked quite often is is things about like I don't know how to render, I don't know how to shade stuff. Uh, if I was gonna recommend one of Marcos's books that that would address that for you, it would be his drawing techniques book. Um, he really covers a lot of what I would consider the frosting that you put on drawings in that book. And so most people it, are, are pulling their structure from many sources. They might be learning from how to draw comics the Marvel way and Bridgman and Loomis and Proko and David Finch and whatever. All the millions of sources of sort of foundational uh, drawing stuff. But I'm telling you, I get asked all the time. I don't know how to render my stuff. Or I don't know how to um light you know put shadows on my stuff so that book will definitely help you um or you could follow my patreon which uh, i cover that stuff a lot because i know how important it is so all right let's do this nice cover i like it it's actually pretty cool got that really nice airbrush background looks just like asphalt it's very very cool that's yeah, nice it's, that is really, really cool piece. I like the balls and stuff like that. Yeah, it's really cool. All right. Let's go, friends. Let's go. Oh, look. There he is. John Belushi. He's so funny. <laughs> that guy's awesome. Oh, my gosh. He's got the bolo. I think that's what they call those things. Oh, this guy was cool, too. The biker guy. Oh, wait. There's a guy in this... The, people always used to tell me that I look like is this dude this actor right here I don't I think that's him he's kind of the like the kind of nerdy dude he's nerdy ish but uh I, I used to look like him he played Amadeus in uh Amadeus <laughs> I don't know the actor's name I don't think we look that much like each other anymore Okay, so we've got Corbin and Strand, Picodo, Bilal, Moro, Voss, Kofod, Drier. Oh, Alex Nino. Yeah, that one, that's one story that we've got coming up is very, very detailed. So we're, we're good to go. We got Mobius, Corbin. We're, we're going to be like happy art fans. I love all these old ads too. I have one of these magazines. I bought it at the swap meet, the Starlog. I think it had Empire Strikes Back on the cover. <laughs> <coughs> I would say, like, if you, in junior high school and high school, there was always the one kind of stoner kid that would have, like, Fangoria magazine or, or like, Movie Monsters magazines in their backpack. It was the kid you wanted to be friends with if you were bored in class so they could slip you some entertainment chain mail i guess that's their letters column oh i get it chain mail i wasn't like really soaking in the whole uh thing this is nice pretty cool 
I'll tell you what, man. These magazines really do actually pack a lot of entertainment. The Last Voyage of Sinbad. Hmm, that's pretty interesting. I could get down with some Sinbad stories. That would be pretty fun to, to draw. I have to make a mental know that. Oh, that was what I was going to tell you guys, too. Seriously. And I'm saying this partially so that I can kick myself in the ass for this. I need to start writing stuff down. I'm sick of having cool ideas that I go, you know, like, not, they don't always have to be, like, something that you're going to do now. But, you know, you might think of, like, a really good character name. Or you go, like, hey, you know what? At some point, I'd like to do a Sinbad-style comic book story. You know, maybe it's a short story or whatever, but you want to do it. Write it down, because I'm telling you, you will forget this shit. And, and I'm actually a believer of, like, your best ideas you probably would never forget. But, but, uh past that i i would say at least a couple of times a day i go i should write this down because that's actually kind of a cool idea or a little aha moment with drawing or whatever it is and uh, i don't and then you know the next day i'm like what was that thing i was like all impressed about <clears throat> so you know don't do as i do do as i say <laughs> this guy's got a little bit of a corbin vibe to his stuff but doesn't take it as deep as Corbin would. It's still not bad. The colors are very Corbin, though. Look at this like right here. <clears throat> it's like the Don Bluth palette. Kelsey, the Kelsey palette, too. Kelsey uses those colors a lot. Yeah, this guy's got to be a, a Corbin fan. Unless I wasn't paying attention, this is Corbin. But I think it was... Maybe it was Corbin and Strand, and I'm just stupid. Let me see. File of it uh contents oh it is corbin's turn okay that makes sense <laughs> people are yelling at the screen rich it is corbin you fuck this piece of crap jack is oh man look at that somewhere these originals exist i always love that i love the idea that that uh, out there somewhere in the world, these drawings are on paper. They're not NFTs. No. <laughs> I will say this. This is just an observation. A lot of people are very, very intimidated by NFTs. It's it's really interesting seeing the, like, I am not even going to address this. I think that they're here to stay, honestly. I... I I, I would maybe initially have thought that it's like a fad of some sort. I don't think it is. Don't believe it. I think people will invest in them. And again, if you watch the videos, I explain a little bit in depth more what I believe that they truly represent. And it's not so much about the art. I think that's the, the problem is a lot of people are focusing on it is the art. They're just the bills. It's just the art on the bills. But the, the value is the collectible, you know. It's like we all agree that a Frazetta painting is worth X amount of dollars, you know. Not we all, but uh, the people that collect that stuff. It's the same with these digital assets, you know. And it, again, it's not so much about the actual piece as, as the perceived value of it. It's a weird thing. But anyway. But yeah, these are all on paper somewhere, hopefully still existing out there. But look, as an artist, you know, the thing is, is we have the best of both worlds. None of us should really be complaining uh, because we can do our traditional art, but we can also make NFTs out of it. You know, I mean, clearly it's, people are doing it. So you don't have to be a digital artist to do it. And, and uh, you know, they're, they're just, it's just a different thing. Back in 1978 nobody was thinking this <laughs> i like this guy <laughs> he's funny <clears throat> this stuff reminds me of a few different artists it's funny i'm like i'm getting like all these different sort of vibes but then he drifts away from it and it's like i lose it it's, it's actually they draw well hence why they're in heavy metal magazine but Mm, Bilal, this is nice. I have this book. The Death 
of Orleans. <laughs> or legendary immortality. Right? Yeah. Nineteen seventy eight. Man, that was a long time ago. <laughs> Is it raining? It's raining outside. Oh my gosh. It's always a crazy day to work with the rain. Gotta put on some good background music or movie or something i was thinking about actually watching some movies today but i don't know what not watch movies but i'm listening that guy got pulverized yeah i think i think in general um you know having the opportunity to see all this different stuff is is just always cool so a video like this even if you don't like all the art i think is still um worthwhile like i'm not a huge fan of this style of art it's it's well drawn but it's a little um not exciting to me i guess you'd say it felt a little like honestly like valiant art to me like the valiant company or defiant like it's like very sort of sort of realistic proportions not a lot of like the image pizzazz on it you know it's n n like not kirby based <laughs> Even though Kirby sometimes is buried in the mix on stuff quite heavily, but this guy clearly can draw well. He went crazy with the like misty white on this. A little too much, I I thinks. It was funny. I, w I was having this sort of experience recently and i i find myself not liking white gutters on pages that much i think it can work but sometimes it doesn't for me like the white is like too too much i don't know i mean i don't know what you could do on pages like this to make it not be white but it's like yeah i don't know i think what it is too part of it is because it's hand painted it doesn't have the depth map this is great what a really cool uh, design for the ad Oh, uh, and you know what I like about this? Is it's just not a freaking... Oh, God, I can't stand this. I see art so much done like this where they just, like... Uh, this is... Or, uh, oh, I cut it. You know what I'm saying, where they just flip it? I, I really don't like that. If you're going to do it, I get doing it for the structure, but you have to render the stuff just differently, or it just looks goofy. Like, I don't want to see three dots here and three dots here and a little line here and a little line here. To me, that's just lazy art. That's, that, that is one thing that I'm not a fan of. I saw an NFT with that recently. <laughs> Look at her. She seems like a fun girl. So you always wanted to be a member of baseball's most exciting team. Hmm. I bet those shirts would be kind of collectible now. So this is interesting. This is like a, like a, I don't know if it's World War II or some sort of Nazi thing. And we got nudity. Okay. Yeah, I saw this when I was opening the files. It's like, kind of like the art though. I mean, it's, it's got some fun kind of creative, like this little MC Escher kind of vibey thing. This is cool. It's cartoony, but I, I mean, you know, again, there's room for all these different styles. It's... He draws pretty well, he or she. Yeah, this has got a lot like that um, very 70s, like stoner art kind of thing. <laughs> Uh, guitars are funny. Oh, they're such a pain in the ass to draw. Sort of. Like, the uh, the shape of his guitar is actually funny. I didn't notice that. Oh, I guess both of their guitars are that. That's funny. All right. Yeah, the strings and the frets and all that, you know. It can be a little bit of a pain in the butt. 
especially if they need to be like accurately on on model less paws are actually very difficult to draw the body shape is very weird um, and it's uh, tough at angles because it starts to look for it's you can foreshorten it accurately and it looks wrong and that's that's always frustrating when it's actually right and it looks wrong and then you have to make it look right when you know that it's not right so what is this? okay this is pretty cool <laughs> oh, this Frazetta? What else do we got here? The photography of Helmut Newton. We got some Klimt. Frank Kelly Frias. I've actually I've heard people recently talking about Kelly Frias. Album cover art. Interesting. This I don't own, I mean, I do in the heavy metal magazines, but I don't think I have any Druyer books. We're going to get hit over the head here in a second, though, with some really, really badass Alex Nino art. This is nice, the Stone Eater piece. It's actually very cool. It's got a little bit of a Beksinski sort of vibe to it. A little Bruger, the Elder, Bruegel. So this is... Kind of cool, kind of ge Giger ish. A little bit. This is nice. I don't remember what year the Necronomicon came out. What's this cool? So is this Monera? I don't know, Candace. Let's see. Uh... Hmm. It doesn't say. I don't know. It doesn't. Uh, maybe that's Serpieri, early Serpieri. I don't know. Maybe none. I've never seen that book. What do we got here? This looks pretty cool. It's got a little bit of that Spanish art style. Oh, this is nice too. Damn. Man, that's really really cool. Is Man Good by Mobius? I assume I've seen that, but hmm, it doesn't ring a bell off the top of my head. This is great. Oh, since I wonder if this was the artist. I think this was. This was the artist we were looking at that was doing that really detailed stuff in the last magazine. Nice painted cover. Oh, God. Look at this. This is nuts. So this is based on the Isle of the Dead, if you don't know the painting. Um, and even Giger did sort of a riff off of it. Man, this is badass. Let's go all the way in. Dude, that's crazy. Hell yeah. That is awesome. This story is nuts, too. Settle in, because this is some good shit. Wow. Man, that is crazy. Damn. Bam, 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 bam. Boy, I mean, geez, this would take, oh my gosh, I would say 100 hours. I don't even know what size this is drawn at, but I, based on some of my super psycho black drawing pieces, whew, yeah, I would say 70 to 120 hours on this. So a few weeks, probably. Although, who knows? Maybe these guys were doing, like, speed, and they would just sit and draw for, like, 20 hours. You know, he could knock out in a few days. It was the 70s. <laughs> it's hard to say what they were on. Now artists are on Red Bull and other stuff. I just do coffee. Iced coffee. You can see is kind of letting off the gas a little bit on these. Still detailed, but uh, yeah, like this is a little more doable. Cool, cool panel border thing going on here. This is nice. Yeah, pretty neat. 
Wow, that's crazy. This is like those old drafting style signatures. You can see like Sid Mead and um, even Sean Gordon Murphy kind of signs his name in sort of this. It's it's a certain I don't know. Like I said, it reminds me of like a drafting. Like if you were, took drafting classes and stuff like that, it's kind of like a draftsman's approach to signatures. Okay. Sorry if you can hear the birds outside. I don't know, there's like doves or something. Ooh -hoo, ooh -hoo. I'm not really into this stuff. I wonder if it was an interesting story to read. And this is the nice panel, and this is nice too. This is good. This is nice too. I mean, they're they're, they're all nice. This is the nice shot, though. This is I like that too. It's got a lot of pages. Jeez Louise. Come on, guys. Let's get to some crazy stuff. Alright, so this this is Drie. These dudes are crazy, man. Wow, this is cool looking. This has got a little uh like this reminds me of Little Nemo and Sl Sl Slumberland, like a Windsor McKay kind of vibe. Yeah, that's really cool. Damn. I love art. Art, 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 art all day. And art, art, art. This guy could have done a very cool um, Dark Tower <laughs> story. Oh, man, this shit is cool. Oh, man. Oh, I, you ever feel like this? Like, and again, this kind of goes back to the, like, that we have too much shit at our disposal. There's days where I literally wish I could be, like, studying, watching five different documentaries, looking at ten different comics, listening to four different albums, all at once. <laughs> That's me every day. That's what I, I, it frustrates me. I'm like, there's not enough time in the day to do everything that I want to do. I want to listen to this interview, but this interview is two hours. I want to see this movie. I need to study these four comics that are going to be the answer to every question that I ever had with my art. I, I also need to do this and that. And it never happens. Wow, this is cool. Damn. This is why w one magazine at a time is better. Yeah, this is good shit. Really, really cool. Fuck, man. I like it. Oh, shit, it's 10 o'clock. All right, we got to get get moving a little bit. I cannot mess today up. I need to be productive. There's not a lot of solid black on these. There's a little bit here and there, but overall, um, most of the black is actually with lines through it, so... You start placing solid blacks on pieces like this, it can actually um, draw the eye too much. So you kind of want to use it to surround things a little bit more and then just kind of sprinkle it throughout so that it kind of moves right through it. I would personally not recommend, unless you are super, super determined to do something this detailed, that you would attempt something like this. I mean, you could do it for a piece or two, but um, you, you're going to need a lot of stamina. You know, your art cardio needs to be quite uh, high to be able to do this on any kind of regular basis. But if you're into it, then God bless you. <laughs> but yeah, it takes a very, very special individual to be able to commit to stuff like this. Actually, like, uh, what's his name? I can't think of his name. Cursed Pirate Girl. Jeremy, is his name Jeremy? space on it. Hold on, let me look. I've got it over here. I want, oh, Bastion. Jeremy Bastion. Jeremy Bastion does some very, very detailed pen and ink stuff that's like, like 
kind of along the lines of this but you know it's like he doesn't produce a ton of books but if you like this kind of art you may like cursed pirate girl especially there's um like a red covered book that's kind of like the second series i think it's really really good all right we're getting to the end man that is nice so hopefully this was fun look looks like money um and uh yeah you know we looked at a lot of different styles of art today we actually enjoyed two very retro heavy metal magazines from 1977 the first issue and then this was i think the what month is this july 78th if i'm not mistaken Man, it's crazy. Colored well, this could actually look cool. I know it's a little sacrilegious to say because the black and white art looks so good, but but uh, a intelligent colorist using the cues of the stronger shapes in this could actually color it and make it look actually pretty badass. And it would, in a weird way, kind of um, mentally simplify it for a viewer. This is nice. Very different, but this is pretty well drawn. Yeah, it's good. This reminds me a little of Kelsey's stuff in a weird way. That's funny. Kelsey, if you see this, what do you think? Does some of this remind you of you? It's just like you, you would draw it more accurately, but it's like some of the storytelling and stuff like that too, the shots. That's nice. And what do we have here? Well, that was fun. I I think uh, I would like to look at a few more heavy metal magazines at some point. I mean, I, I could on my own, but uh, odds are I would not. Which is why I do these videos. I'm I and that's actually that is funny because that's that's how this all came about. If you don't know the story of me doing this, so I've been on YouTube for about four or five years now, so I didn't jump on a bandwagon of doing book reviews. Um, but uh, yeah, I wouldn't ever look at art. I would always work, and very very rarely would I actually look through any of my stuff. And so, at some point, I started doing open that book, and open that book turned into something else and then super fun sunday kind of came out of that but yeah i mean it really is it's actually this is really the only time that i i kind of for fun look at art it sounds weird but if, if you work a lot as a professional artist you just don't have that much time to be a fan at least the way i work all right so these we can just kind of go through. i like this back cover it's pretty cool Again, that really textury, almost like it looks like granite. Look. The most incredible t shirts in this galaxy. That's kind of cool. It has a little bit of like a uh, indie comics vibe. <laughs> Alright, whoa. What the fuck was that? Hold on. That was weird. It was like I got a glimpse of like a double page spread, but I don't know. What was that? I just want to see if I can find what that was. That was really weird. Is it, maybe it was one of these pages and just like... I think it was maybe this. Like the top of that or something. Okay, you guys have a great day. Hopefully that was fun to look at. Again, if you can, please smash the like. If you haven't subscribed yet, definitely do it. And uh, please share the videos. We're creeping up. We, we need about 500 more subs to get to 20,000. And uh, that will actually be very, very cool. I'll, I'll be honest. I don't know if I ever really imagined that I would get to that number. 